The Team Lolly Show was previously recorded. It's time to enter the world of real estate in Oahu with Hawaii's only true real estate radio show, the Team Lally Real Estate Show. Grab a pen and get ready to take notes. For the next full hour, Hawaii's premier real estate leader, Adrienne Lally and Attilio Leonardi, will bring you the latest in real estate news and real-world strategies on how they can guarantee to sell your home at a price and deadline you agree to, or they'll buy it. Now, here are your hosts, Adrian and Attilio. Welcome to the Team Lally Real Estate Show, home of the Guaranteed Sold Program, or we'll buy it. If you have any questions, just give us a call at 799-9596 or check us out online at teamlally.com. Hey, everybody. This is Attilio, and this is that art part of the show, ART, Attilio's Random Thoughts. These are things that I think about for the last seven days from the last show to share with our listeners today. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, magic words. I have journals. If I die tomorrow, you just go to my house, look at all my journals and my notes and my notebooks, and you know what I was thinking. That's rare today because do you know why we know what uh, Van Gogh was thinking? Yes, because he was writing letters to his brother. Yep. That's yeah. how we know what Van Gogh was thinking, whatever, mm-hmm. 100, 200 years ago, uh, because of written handwriting, which is what we do not have anymore and nowadays. And it, it was in cursive also. Yeah. He was swearing? No, what do you mean? No, it was, he had cursive handwriting. Oh, cursive. You mean script? Yeah, the, the, yes. the, which is, which, uh, interesting know. enough, we know is not being taught in school anymore. So if you want to have secrets with your kids, uh, write it in cursive. <laughs> Is that your uh, tip of the day? Yeah. That's how you keep... Uh, don't put it on any social media. They have no idea what you're talking about, these kids nowadays. So here's the... Ma- this is from the book. I-, I call it Magic Words. It's exactly what to say for real estate agents by James Smith. Uh, so if you're an agent, get this book. If you're somebody who likes to communicate with other human beings, collect. get this book. The worst time to think of what to say is in the moment you are saying it. What does a professional realtor do prior to a consultation or meeting or on a daily basis to get better at conversation? We just like, they're they're practicing, practicing every day. And then even like before the consultation, we're preparing. We know what our clients want. They want honesty. They want care. They want listening. They want an agent who's prepared. They want somebody who's patient and professional. Well, the other day we had a client that we met with and he, the reason why he was not going to go with his other realtor was because of the other C word. Which is what? Confidence. Confidence. Yeah, confidence. Lack of confidence. Yeah. You can say all the right words, but if you're not coming across confidently, they're like, oh, I don't know. You don't have the right tone. They're going right? to tell you, they, yeah. this is how they tell you they, you're fired. Oh, we need to think about it. So it's amazing how some people achieve and and substitute the word people for any industry. I'll put put agents. It's amazing how some agents achieve dramatically different results than others with the same ingredients. Why? Because you can have the ingredients, but are you practicing it? Are you working on it? Are you constantly moving in a direction of mastery? And by the way, we never reach mastery. It's an asymptote which means we get closer and closer to it infinitely, but we never truly reach it. That is a definition of working towards mastery as you keep practicing. How many hours minimum? 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. To mastery. Yeah. Yep. So speaking of mastery, we're looking for somebody that can be a master of the phones and help us mm-hmm. with our database and all these problems we got, which is too many leads and not enough people to follow up with them, but we do. And that position is called what? What's the acronym for that position? It's an ISA. ISA. Or What's someone that that's like inside sales. Inside sales agent. Someone that likes to be on the phone. We call them a, a phone pro. Phone pro. Like people that like to kind of gamify. You like to play games. This would be like a great. And I don't mean play games like, you know, like in the in the negative tone, but play games in that they, they, they like to, oh, somebody did 10, I'm going to do 11. Or, oh, this person things. told me no? Yeah. Okay, great. Next, like, how many more calls can I make? Yeah, until to I get, get a yes. yes. So it's yep. super easy. Join TeamLally.com to start the process. Join Team Lally to start the process. You know, this is somebody that can work in-house, banker's hours, and make agent money. What's agent money? 
Age of money, 150000 a year? Yeah, six figures. Six figures. You know, I hate that when people say six figures, but they don't. What six figures? Yeah. We're telling you what the six figures are. 150000 could be 990000 That's six figures. Or it could be 100000 but it's about one hundred fifty. And to what, start, I would say, and then as you are, the are as you're getting closer to mastery, it gets yeah. easier to connect with yeah, more people and set more appointments. Direct proportion yes. to your income, to your level of mastery. Unlike a job, like say if you work, you know, I don't know, you work for the government, it doesn't matter how much you, you know, I know down at the post office, I got a friend that works down there and he's like, they're always telling him, hey, hey, hey slow down. You're making, you're making us, us look, look bad. bad. That is the, I'm not making that up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you do not want to mess with people that could go postal on you at the post office. So is that, you know, I'm not saying that that's how it is all down there. I mean, it's got, it's, you know, my the positives for it has been around for a long time. It's still how we deliver our birthday cards and all of that. And there's a lot that they got to do. You mm-hmm. busting your hump out there delivering a whole bunch of, especially all them catalogs. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck are you delivering catalogs for? Just go on the website. Anyway, if you want to be in an environment where we focus 80% on personal growth, 20% on business, join teamlally.com, inside sales agent. We got it all super dialed in. We ha- we like, instead of you coming, like I say, we're Coca-Cola. You're not coming to us and like, figure out how to make Coca-Cola. No, we already have the ingredients. We need you to pump out more Coca-Cola. We're also looking for just like regular agents, outside sales agents. Yeah. So regular agents. Regular. The regular ones. And you know a lot of changes in our industry yeah. recently. And you can have a ton of experience. You can have a little experience. You could be newly licensed. Yeah. Thinking just, about it? Yeah. Just if you're thinking about it, Hawaii Career Night.com, Hawaii Career Night.com. We have career nights every other month. Zoom or in person. Check it out. R S V P. Uh, if you want to make a switch in your career, but I will or, tell you, or switch in your brokerage, switch brokerage and stuff like that. So or we, switch in your team. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right now our industry, we're hiring. <laughs> our, our industry, from the media's perspective, is like Game of Thrones. Winter is coming. Well, so yeah, you, no, I was at a physical yeah. therapy appointment, and my physical therapist was like, "Oh, I heard the news. Like, you you guys can't get paid anymore." Yeah, that was her perspe- perception of from the what's media. Happening. Like, so. We all work for free now. What if you're in an industry and the media is oh. telling the, the the lay people out there now you got to work for free? I would question that kind of reporting. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just told her it's sen- they're sensationalizing things and yeah. it can be very confusing, but that is not what's happened. Yeah. So, so get the facts. Uh, uh, don't list your home with us. Interview us. Interview us, and if you're not hundred percent, one hundred percent satisfied with the level of service that we said we're going to do, which is high, and that's not what you're getting in the reality of your interaction with us, then fire us and pay nothing. That's it. All right, Adrian, what else? Well, we do have a review from Nathan Showrack. By the way, you're reading one of these reviews, and, and, and every week we're reading reviews that we have recently received. That's right. Not reviews from five years ago. Yes. But we're adding it to our, our, you know, in marketing, we call it our pile of gold coins, mm-hmm. our pile of gold coins, which is all our reviews. How many reviews do we have on Google? Ooh, well over 500. Over 500. Five, well over, five yes. star. Five I mean, star five, av- average. Five, five, five point oh average. That's right. Yeah. So what's all that right, one So say? this one says, Lisa was a pleasure to work with. She spent so much time helping us to know the neighborhoods down to the weather changes. Wow. Hawaii is intimidating to invest in real estate, and she makes it so much easier to decide. Good job, Lisa. Yeah, I 100% can predict the weather for the rest of the year, sunny <laughs> or rainy. <laughs> well, I mean, different parts of the island have different, like, microclimates. So she okay, was... Okay, that part of the was... island, more sunny, less rainy. Yes, oh, so that was... side of the island, more rainy, less sunny. Exactly. There you go. I just made predictions for all areas of the but island. But it's important to know these things, especially if you like to have a more sunny... Most of the time, like yeah. me, yeah, which is why I live in Eva Beach. Yeah, so we we travel to other parts of the island, get all wet, then we come back to Eva Beach to dry off. Yeah, and uh, and all of that good stuff. Well, uh, the um, 
You know, the format of our show is this. People thinking, hey, it's just all real estate. No, we try and bring things to you. Ah, well, here's one for you. Raise your hand if you're tired of your neighbor's car that's been parked across the street for nine years. Me. Yeah. Uh, that would be like everybody mm-hmm. in every neighborhood on this entire island. We have more registered vehicles than licensed drivers. It's redonkulous. Uh, so don't be one of those neighbors with your car that's been sitting there with the tags. Is The tags are so expired, they faded and peeled off and fell on the ground. So get rid of the car. Let it go. You All can... you got to do is go to honolulu.gov backslash Charlie Sierra Delta. And there's either an online form or a number you can call. And they'll come take it away for free. You can also donate it, right? With I know Habilitat, yeah. Habilitat is taking donations. Cars. Yeah. And so they'll come take it away. Uh, the Here's the rule of thumb, folks. On public parking on public streets. You can leave it there for as long as 24 years before you can get one ticket. Mm-mm. That's not right. 24 hours. Oh, wow. 24 hours. So if you see yellow chalk line, grease pencil on your tire, that means HPD or somebody is marking the tire to see if you're, and they usually mark it at the bottom part of the tire on the ground. So if you come back 24 hours later and that mark is still there, they have determined that car has not moved in the last 24 hours. And can be towed immediately. Can Don't they, towed they normally immediately. will do like a ticket though first, right? It's Sometimes. Like a warning. Sometimes, but it depends. If the car looks like it's obviously been there for uh, 25 years, what does it matter if they're going to ticket? It's mm-hmm. time. It's time to talk to one of our experts it's we trust. It's time to tow it. Well, now it's time to talk to one of our experts we trust. All right. Speaking of uh, towing the bad choices out of your life and bringing <laughs> good ones into it through proper estate planning, who do we have? That would be Amphi with the estate planning group. Hey, Amphi. Aloha. Hey, Atilio. Hey, Adrian. Hello. Hello. So what you got for us, Amphi, this week regarding uh, what estate you, planning? Estate planning. Uh, uh, this week, too many. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm actually be going to um, next week. I'll be at a conference in Austin, Texas, on special needs planning. Special needs? You mean maybe you're a caretaker for a special needs person? That kind of yeah. scenario. So yeah, when you have love loved ones that have special needs, that have disabilities, whatever, or not uh, they're incapacitated. Yeah. You know, many families worry, right, what happens to their child uh, who has special needs, you know, when they are no longer here and able now to provide the love and care for their loved ones. Yeah. So, so what's your so suggestion? I'm sending all yeah. of next week. Well, he's, I mean, I know that Amphi has helped many families already with this. Yeah. But it sounds like he's going to go learn even more and go deeper on well, how to be even, uh, have a, an even better plan. Well, I guess, I mean, this versus not having it, definitely get a trust. And uh, what you're going to do to get, correct me if I'm wrong, to get super dialed in on that is what to put in the trust regarding your special needs uh, family member or whomever whomever you may be taking care of. Uh, So that's good. Have that plan. Well, I I know that Amphi's talked about this in the past, especially with the the special needs children. You've got to be careful about um, how how things are passed on, right? Because you said that it could um, jeopardize any kind of um, benefits that they're getting from the state. Talk- yeah. Did you did you want to talk about that a little bit? Like, what does that mean, Ampy? Exactly that, Adrian. You hit it on the head when you talk about special needs planning. Yeah. Um, the. I, I think, you know, it's one of those unintended consequences where if we don't plan properly for our loved ones with special needs, we will now make them ineligible for, you know, probably much needed services when you look at things like housing, Medicaid, treatment, whatever else that they may be needing. And now making them ineligible basically says you're going to have them be kicked out and of course, now um, they have to be qualified. So 
creating a lot of problems. Yeah, I think there's uh, Socrates even knew this 2,000 years ago. He said that a, and then and then someone who came into existence 15 years after his death, which was Aristotle, who studied Socrates a lot. But Socrates said that a, a life without self-examination is not a life worth living. And then Aristotle was an actual philosopher, estate planner. And he said, a life without a plan is not worth living. <laughs> you should put that on your business cards. A life without a plan is not worth living. Man, I'm going to all these, Atilio. <laughs> That's from Aristotle, 2,000 years ago. So, anyway, uh, thanks, MP. Yes, thank you, and have a great time at your conference. We yeah. look forward to learning more, yes, on all the, these things that you've learned Yeah. while you're away. Okay. Definitely. You know, things always change. Like I said, Yeah. we have conferences that we go to two times a year yeah. to really be on top of things in terms of what are changing in the landscape of the laws and in yeah. case, case law and all these different things. So looking forward to learning more. So, all right. Thanks, MP. Thank, thank you, you. Guys. Bye. Bye. All right. Next up, he's the samurai of uh, property management. He's constantly going places to sharpen his samurai sword to get better and better at it. Uh, constantly traveling, seeking new information, to get better and better. Who is that, Adrian? That would be Duke Kim Han of Hawaii Pacific <laughs> Property Management. You're the samurai of property management. That's right. Samurai! Yeah, I'm in Vegas. <laughs> I'm in Vegas right now. Sharpening, Sharpening your samurai sword. sword. Yeah. So today I want to talk about lawn care. Yeah. And so many owners kind of think that the lawn is an afterthought and it's just an expense. But the lawn in your house is... It's the, one of the largest assets that you can have when you're trying to upgrade your house. You're yeah. trying to say, hey, I want my house to be worth this, or I think my, worth, my house is worth this. But you cannot just gauge the value of your house on the inside. Yeah. The outside of your house has so much to do with first impression, appeal, curb appeal, value, everything. Now, most of us or half of us have an HOA taking care of our front of our house. Yeah. But the back, the backyard, the Inside back entrance, yard. yeah, the back appeal has a lot to do with your value. So do not let a tenant mess with your value. That's what it comes down to. If you let the tenant take care of your yard, then you can't have Hawaii Pacific property management take care of your property because I cannot walk past a disgusting yard. Well, it's a good thing to have those those boundaries. I think that you've had you've seen too many homeowners that um, will you know lose thousands of dollars because landscaping. Well, spend a lands bunch of yeah, money. landscaping is really expensive, and then the association they can do. find you, and yeah. it just can be a huge Dude, mess. Would you say like letting the tenants take care of the yard is like giving the keys to your lu- brand new luxury vehicle to your teenager? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Because exactly. We have been to court over this several times and yeah. lost every single time. Yeah. So, you know, when you go to try and fix up your lawn after two years of having a tenant in there that didn't take care of it, that yeah. was supposed to, mm-hmm. it's it's five grand minimum to mm-hmm. get it all back to normal again. Yeah. yeah so we're... most security deposits don't cover that. Yeah, we have a tenant just right now. We're, we're spending a couple thousand bucks. They had a rent. It was for rent by owner. That's why they had the mm-hmm. tenant doing it for rent by owner. Thankfully, this tenant was um, maintaining the yard, but there was a lot of weeds. They still but they didn't, spent they didn't, yeah, they didn't kill the grass. A thousand bucks cleaning up the back, the inside, yeah. and the front, even with the tenant taking care they of it. So, yeah. They don't have a vested interest no. in the long term value. Mm-mm. You know, it's just care for them. It's just. Because I agreed to do it, yeah. and to get a few bucks off my rent, uh-huh. I'm going to take care of the lawn. But man, better off hiring a service. Bad news. Yeah. Yep. If you want my advice, take care of the lawn, upgrade, uh, up, upcharge the rent, and just add the hundred bucks in and get your lawn service to take care of it. Yeah. Take twice care, a month. Take care of your yard. Keep your rental income up. Mm-hmm. And the value of your house. Yeah. Maintain and the that. value. Yeah. 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 That's what you're doing. You're letting me take care of your house and maintain it. So when you come back or you want to sell it someday, it's going to be 
Or at the minimum, you know, the, our houses are going up 25 k minimum a year yeah. here. Minimum. And this yard service, that's a write-off. Yeah. For that's a write-off. It's a write-off. It's an expense. Yeah. Yep. So that's the tip of the day. Awesome. Thank you, Duke. You know how we're going to drive right. down? We, I, Duke, I drive down the neighborhoods. I'm like, owner, renter, owner, renter. Now I have owner, a third yep. one. Exactly. Owner, I agree. renter, managed by Duke. <laughs> owner, renter, managed by Duke. <laughs> <laughs> thanks duke sure bye-bye right. thanks duke all right that's duke kim han of hawaii pacific property management you can uh, find him on our website yeah. under experts we trust on the resource tab he's got lots of helpful videos so I, you know, to peruse I, through we've, them. we've seen it people spend fifteen twenty thousand dollars on landscaping mm -hmm. your tennis can destroy it in about 90 days yep that's it and he probably has a video on that yeah. I mean, he's he, he's pretty yeah, good about what? sending that information out. Uh, go to our website, to our vendor section, and check out his videos. There's a video blog. I don't know. He's probably got 200 plus videos maybe already. Yeah, probably. He's been doing it. Kind of he's been, he's been doing short. it for years. Short kind. We also have a lot of videos as yeah, well. Yeah, we got plenty of videos. Lots of videos. All right. Okay, so uh, speaking of vendors, uh, our team has been responsible for purchasing t two cars from Tony Honda <laughs> at Costco out there in uh, Waipio. So I know Tony has gone on to Glory, and mm -hmm. now his son is taking it over. So this is a call out to all the people, the peeps down at Tony Honda. We want you to be a sponsor of our show because uh, I think it would be a great partnership is uh, having Tony, Han Tony Honda be a sponsor of our show. Or Tony Auto Group. Tony Auto Group because, yeah, we want them all. Mm -hmm. He got all. He's I don't know. He got a whole bunch of brands and stuff like that. The reason why is that we really like the level of service. By, by the way, big shout out to Sabrina. Sabrina, she's our she's our Kiko Cole uh, car sales person, executive, whatever. Sabrina down at Tony Group. Tell them Team Lally sent you, and we're expecting our Costco gift card <laughs> <laughs> for the referral. But uh, you know, a lot of times the experience that you have. You know, we're constantly, for Adrian and I, we're constantly, like, we look at how service is provided and the different experiences we have with businesses, and we look for two things. The bad things, ooh, don't do that. And then the good things, we try and, like, oh, we should do that in our business. Mm -hmm. So what's something recently that, or not recently, but that we got from another industry? I'll tell you what. I used to work for Servco in the appliance division, and we went to go. Uh, we went to go visit the factory, Sanyo, Sanyo. By the way, uh, I think it got sold. So it's not. I don't think it's owned by Japanese. I think it's owned by a Taiwanese company. Is what I heard. But Sanyo means three sons. San three, yo. Uh, but anyway, we went to their corporate executive office, and we had all the sales reps from all across the country. And uh, when we walked in on a stanchion, it was like the black one with the white letters that you poke them in there, and they stick up there. It had mm -hmm. welcome. Atilio san. <laughs> and so I thought, wow, I never had a welcome sign for myself except for the doormat at my house. It says, Welcome you know, home. E como mai. Hmm. Uh, so I thought that, and it made me feel good. So when you come to our office, uh, we put on welcome sign. And uh, we put that right up front when you come in because I thought it just makes it, it demonstrates to us that we were intentional for our time together that you are somebody that is important to us and that we want to serve at a high level, why not have a welcome sign when they walk in? Just imagine you significant others. What if you did that for your spouse? Welcome home, <laughs> that Charlie. Would, that would be kind of weird. What? <laughs> it would be weird in a good way. But, you know, and then, you know, and I know you guys, you always go to the negative. What did I do wrong? No, you didn't do anything wrong. What if you just, you know, do it for your kids? Welcome home. Maybe like when they're coming Toby? home from college, but maybe not from school every day. Not every day. Like, don't, if you do it every day, like, ah, boy, mom's crazy again with her welcome home sign. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it kind of feels good to, 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 to do that. So that's one of the things that we do. There's pro I think we have like a, a 182 point checklist uh, for our experience with our clients. Uh, speaking of which, do we no? I think. Do we want to do the March report for real estate? No, I think we want to take a break. Okay. And uh, when we come back, we'll be talking with Jody Tonga of Pacific Rim Mortgage, who will provide us with a timely economic update that could impact your financial future. So stay with us. Give my 
Hey, did you know that Team Yali has a radio show on our sister station, AM 690, FM 94.3, The Answer? Well, it's a good thing Mark was tuned in that day. He had inherited a unit in Y&I and was curious about selling. Of course, he called my friends Adrian Lally and Attilio Leonardi of Team Lally Real Estate Group of Keller Williams, Honolulu, to come take a look. After seeing the unit, Adrian and Attilio got to work giving Mark some pre-sale advice. Since they noticed the property needed a little TLC before listing, they got to work immediately. And the home received two offers in only a few short weeks and closed. And you know what comes next? Over asking price. When you need to sell your home for the most money with the least amount of drama, trust Adrian and Attilio of Team Lally to do the job for you. Call 808-799-9596. Again, that's 808-799-9596. Visit TeamLally.com, spelled Lally, L-A-L-L-Y. Taking one cash offer for your home doesn't have to be your only option. I'm Barbara Corcoran, and especially in today's current market, having a local real estate agent who offers great marketing and options that are customized to fit your needs is smart. In Honolulu, the agents I trust are Adrian Lally and Attilio Leonardo. They can give you a guarantee to sell your home flexible fees or up to $10,000 in cash to help with repairs. Get the option that's right for you. Go to TeamLally.com. Hey, Sean Hannity here talking with the only real estate agent in your market I recommend. Adrian Lally and Attilio Leonardi of Team Lally Real Estate Group of Keller Williams, Honolulu. So now that the market is normalizing again, how's that going to impact home selling right now? Sean, let's explain what a normal market is. It's when it's neither a buyer or seller market. Both buyers and sellers have equal negotiating strength and need to focus on a win-win strategy to close. We have over seven highly successful strategies that get homes sold. So is now the time to sell? Sean, the best time to sell is when you need to move. Stop trying to time the market. Smart people spending a lot of money try to time the market and fail. Again, the best time to sell is always when you're ready to move. Great update. Thank you for keeping us informed. Put the most experience and the best marketing to work for you. Call Team Lally now at 799-9596 or online at teamlally.com. That's teamlally.com. Welcome back and thanks for listening to the Team Lally Real Estate Show, Home of the Guaranteed Sold Program, or we'll buy it. I'm Adrian. And I'm Atilio. And if you have any questions, just give us a call at 799-9596 or check us out online at teamlally.com. Hey, our guest today uh, is a seasoned loan officer, mortgage banker, and broker with extensive experience in Hawaii, raised in Kailua, and a graduate of Iolani. She pursued her studies in financial economics at the University of San Francisco for both her undergraduate and graduate degrees. She also worked in banking on the mainland until coming back home to Hawaii and started Pacific Rim Mortgage. Please welcome back our guest, the mortgage genius, Jody Tonga. And she's an avid member of F45, and her and her husband even do, it, do F45 when they're in Vegas. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, Jody. So how's it going? Doing great. What's uh, what you got for us this week? Well, today the much-awaited inflation data came out, and it was higher than the market wanted and higher than the market expected. Okay. And so um, we have seen a harsh, immediate reaction to interest rates that are being offered today. So, for example, if you were to get an accepted offer today, which a couple of our buyers did, Mm -hmm. um, the rate that they are now able to lock today versus yesterday is worse. Um, It is, they they did go up. So, um, also, speculatively, people were hoping for Um, weaker inflation numbers, which then would support the Fed doing their first rate cut um, in June of this year. And so now that probability has really decreased. Um, 
it's not likely at, at this point. The probability has gone much lower that the Fed will be doing a rate cut in June. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we still think that there is going to be one. The Fed still says there are going to be rate cuts. Um, but based on the most today's inflation data, it it will likely not. Well, yeah, very likely not be June. Um, it'll be the latter portion of the year. So, Jody, with these buyers that got their offers accepted today, what's your mm-hmm. advice or your strategy plan on, um, like, with the interest rates? Do you lock yeah. right away? Do you kind of wait? In the moment, what should like, they what's do? Your, what's your advice? Um, well, we are a broker, and so we do have flexibility mm-hmm. to be able to to – lock um, and continue to study the market and continue to know what is happening with interest rates. Yeah. So our recommendation in such a volatile market like this is always if you are in a position where you are good with the monthly payment and you are good with the total amount required out of pocket that you you lock in. We don't want people floating um and, you know, so for all the people that got accepted offers yesterday, yes. had I recommended that they floated, they would now be, now yesterday's rates are entirely gone and they would have the higher interest rate today, right? So yeah. um, similarly, that is the reason that it's like, forget about anything that you've previously seen um, and just tell me, is this a monthly payment that you can pay and is this an amount out of pocket that you are good with? If it is, then let's get locked in. But we will continue to watch the market. And if this was an initial knee-jerk reaction and we see improvements throughout the coming days, then we will work to take advantage of the improvement as well. Yeah. So, Jody, when you say because you're a broker... Does that mm-hmm. mean that, like, you guys have different tools in your tool belt that maybe, you know, other types of lending industries cannot do? Can what you, does that mean? Yeah, can you Broker. explain the difference? Dun, 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 dun. Yes. Yeah, so great question. Um, we we are a broker. So our number one responsibility is to work to get our buyer the best interest rate at the best closing cost, you know, and – um, part of us being able to do our job, we do have relationships with the top wholesale lenders. So these lenders are not necessarily someone that you can like be like, well, I want to call them because I want to go and work directly with them, right? They, they don't do that. They don't work directly with um, like a buyer, for mm-hmm. example. They work with brokers like us and um, they provide us, you know, very, very competitive and the best rates and we decide which out of this handful of top leading lenders that we want to um go with for your loan when you have an accepted offer and based on different unique circumstances like we may only even if i work with 10 top ones i may only two of them may only be viable because of your unique situation and so that's also part of like being a broker is like knowing which wholesale lenders are good at what type dealing with what type of buyers, um, yeah. what's their niche that they're working on. And so um, if you're not a broker, there are a little bit more stringent policies on like once you're locked in, you're locked in and that is it. Um, mm-hmm. but even if rates improve, there's less flexibility to be able to take advantage of that improvement. Mm. You know, the, Jody, the question I have for you in the situations, because uh, we come across this quite a bit. By the way, if you're a seller out there and you're falling behind on payments and you're freaking out and you're not sure what to do, no matter how topsy-turvy the situation is, Adrian and I have personally worked with over 400-plus Oahu homeowners. So here's the question for you. Like, let's say somebody... We're dealing with a distress sale, and we define that as 90 days or more late, mortgage payments, maintenance fees, things like that, and that the, the, the bank, we have to deal with the bank to approve the sale because it's, uh, it's like a short sale, like they owe more uh-huh. than it's worth. In that situation that they write the offer, um, 
And, and well, one of the things is we, on our end, we try not to open escrow with deposits and this and that until we get the approval from the bank. So we take the offer yeah. and we just tell them we're putting it in front of the bank, but we don't have any control over what the buyer is doing on their end. So in that situation right. where there's an ambiguous open-ended situation, would, would you recommend a loan lock or just hang tight? Regard, you know, I guess you, and that's oh, outside of the advice not. of what's happening with interest rates. Right. No, no, no. We, we would always uh, not recommend a loan lock just based on our history. And we've done a ton of, you know, short sales. Yeah. Um, on the purchase side, <laughs> and um, unless the the seller can show to us that they're already sitting on a lender approval, mm -hmm. in that case we would lock. Um, yeah. But if if they haven't even gotten that far, or they're still in the middle of like providing paperwork to their lender, um, the seller's lender then no, it's, it's total, it's, you cannot lock. You just can't lock the interest rate. Yeah. So that's a huge risk, you know, that, that a buyer is taking. And that is something that a good agent and a good lender will discuss um, because they will say, you know, this, we might not hear back for 60 days. We mm -hmm. might not hear back for 120 days. Um, we might not hear back for six months. I mean, we, we don't know how long it's going to take. So yeah, we have um, a document I created back in like 06, 07, 08 when we were doing a ton of them and it was a uh, short sale and distressed uh, sale guidelines from team Lally. And everyone and, had to sign it and everybody had to sign it. Both sides, everybody, seller, buyer agents on both sides. And what I put in that document was all the things we kept getting yelled at about. Oh, yeah. we're in loan lock, and now we got to call all this money. And then so now I put in there, we don't recommend you do a loan lock, and we recommend that you wait right. mm -hmm. till we get bank, written bank of approval. Um, you know, don't do anything to that spend money on stuff that's going to be out of date. Termite inspections, home inspections. Even the, con is, even the condo docs. It's not docs. evergreen. Like condo to... docs, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Because uh, so if you do, you have been forewarned. That's right. It's on you. So, uh, Jody, the, what are you seeing in with today's market as far as like, what's, uh, this one, it comes and goes, it comes and goes, mm -hmm. it started coming a lot, but the, uh, the, uh, the credits for the buy downs, are they still steady, Freddie slowing down? What's been your, is that still a strategy? Yeah. And tell people what that is. And it, and and if how does it work? Does it still make sense nowadays? And is, is do you see a lot of those the the credit credit seller credits for the buy downs? What is that? So, what uh, one of the solutions to a higher interest rate environment uh -huh. is to do what's called a temporary buy down, and a temporary buy down is pretty much just buying you some time at a lower interest rate. And so one. Example of that would be a three to one buy down. This will give you um, three percent lower than the current the rate you're actually locking in at. That would be your monthly payment for the first twelve payments, mm -hmm. for and then year. for the second twelve payments, mm -hmm. yes, um, you would be paying two percent lower. And for the third twelve payments, so year three, you would be paying one percent lower. So if you're locked in at 6%, you're going to pay 3, 4, 5. And mm -hmm. then at the end of the third year, you'll be back up to 6%. And that's what your monthly payment's calculated off of. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a huge monthly savings. It's kind of like it's kind of like how Adrian and I go in the ocean. She's like, it's cold. And she's going in like super slow. And I'm telling <laughs> you, I say, you know, it's more cold when you go in slow. Just dive in. So you can either do 3, 2, 1, like how Adrian, you know, you're going slow. Or just dive in. I guess it depends on the but, strategy and your comfort and income but, and advice whole, from Jody and like your Like the whole agent. reason, though, that, that they, yeah. you know, advise the strategy is that sometime during this three-year period or two-year period, whatever it is that you do. Might go down. That you may be yeah. able to refinance into a lower rate. Right. And then, you know, you have the lower you know, payment permanently. That's true, because going into the ocean slowly uh, with global warming happening, it probably could be warmer as you go slower yeah. into the so, so, 
So the yeah. So the the other thing, um, I know that I had talked to Derek about this. Your the brother, refi. The, yeah, this um, this no cost refi. What is that? Or no lender cost refi? Yeah, what is that? Can we explain that to our listeners and how does that work with Pacrim? Mm-hmm. So part of our, um, you know, we've we've been around for nineteen years and we do want to be like your lender for life. And so when you do a purchase with us, and especially in a, in a market like this, when we know rates are going to go down, we are staying in front of you and making sure that we continue to provide information on interest rates and when would be a good time to refinance. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually when that does that time does come up, we are going to do the refinance without any lender related costs. So basically the costs that we have control over, um, we will not charge you underwriting fee and appraisal fee. And um, there are other fees associated with a refinance, which are charged by the other third parties, such as the escrow Mm -hmm. company. Um, And, there are other pre-collections that have to be made associated with when you're paying off your existing loan and creating a new loan, you have to like recollect your homeowner's insurance reserves and your property tax reserves. So there are still fees. It's not like zero dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, but the ones that we, the lender have control over and the ones that we would usually charge, um, they're waived. We don't charge. Correct. So as long as you buy the home <clears throat> using Pack Rim and they do, you guys do the loan, is it you have like a set time? Is it like within two years, three years, four years? Like what is that time frame that you guys offer that no cost refi? We we don't have a time frame. Oh. So like as long as you work with us, that's so nice. So no limit. Yeah, Just when you're ready. You're, at that point, yeah. At that point, you know you're our sphere you're our our like in the in the family mm-hmm. the good news jody and derek uh they eat well they're pretty in good shape uh so they have a high probability of a long lifespan <laughs> yeah. can't be client for life if you did <laughs> either side our grandmother is turning 104 mm. on june 23rd oh wow oh wow you guys got good genes good genes <laughs> we have some good genes on that side. The uh, the you know it's always that question that people think about here in Hawaii. It's so real estate is so expensive, so expensive. Uh, should I buy or should I just move to Vegas? Or should I rent? Mm-hmm. Or should I rent? So should I buy, move to Vegas, or rent? What's your thoughts? I think. I mean. For me, I think that if there's a way and you you value and you're connected to Hawaii yeah. and being here in Hawaii brings you value as it does me. Like I wake up every morning and I thank God, even though I've been home from college for so long at this yeah. point, um, that I was able to return and that I get to live here. Yes. Um, so... I would do whatever sacrifices possible in Mm -hmm. order to stay here. Um, Also, you know, talking about kids, like I want my kids to to grow up here, you know? Um, If, if you're like not connected with it and you're like, eh, I can come back and visit. Yeah. Um, You know, the schools aren't even that good and this, that, and the other. um, Sure. I do think that you can get value and create an, um, a home, you know, somewhere else that you connect better with and that is 100% more affordable. Yeah. That is not, that's factual, you know. Um, You're, however, for me. Yeah. For you, go ahead. It's just not something that I would, I would rather, you know, get as basic as needed so that we can remain here. Yes. Um, for, the, for the long run. And when you talk about renting, you're not looking long term. You're not thinking long term. You're not you, committed. Uh, you're not committed for more mm-hmm. than a year. <laughs> mm-hmm. So your mm-hmm. answer, your answer, Jody, was like uh, what I call like it was the answer that I call adult diapers. 
depends. It depends. It depends. Yeah. Yeah. It so, really does. I mean, yeah. for some people, I have friends <clears throat> that, that, you know, they have been here for a very long time, their yeah. family, uh-huh. and, and they, their mother and grandparents are still here, but they chose to go and they're in Texas and they live on a lot of land and yeah. they have a compound, um, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have and, some, and they, they, some clients that are doing that right now. The kids are in Texas. They're going to move. Okay. So, uh, I mean, so the yeah, right go ahead. Person, yeah. For the right person, it's just, it does, it could make sense. I can see it making sense. I think that uh, why we're in alignment with you and why you're one of our preferred vendors is that we have the same mindset when we sit down with our clients. It's not about, I want to sell. Okay, this is what it takes to sell. We're going to ask more questions. Should sure. you be really selling? Should, should same you, thing with should like, you be buying? On the finance side, like, yeah. does that make, does it make sense? Yeah. And I know Jody does that with all the, all of her clients. So Jody, as we're, I do. as we're coming to the end of our show, I want, I want to, I want you to share some, some recent success stories. Oh, uh, but real quick before yes. you do that, we were visiting Japan Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking of the pens, they actually sell more adult, adult diapers in Japan than baby diapers. That is a fact. Google it. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So let, let let's hear some happy on that note. Some happy success stories. Even though, like you know, the prices have come up and interest rates have come up, I'm sure that there's been lots of success stories. So Jody, share with us one or two that come to mind. I mean, there there. Every single closing that we do is a success story. And um, part of our uh, (laughs) our team, you know, our team approach with your agents, with all the agents, is that we work together as a team. We answer questions. We explain the process. We get rid of the unknown, um, making everyone feel confident about their decisions. Our piece of the puzzle is making sure that they don't have questions from a financial standpoint and that they feel confident in their decisions moving forward. And we've recently closed a handful, you know, with you guys and all of them, the the buyers are like, man, I didn't know it could be this easy. Yeah. You know, and I do tell them, I'm like, oh, it's not always as easy. Like, (laughs) just so you know, like, it's not always this easy, but when you have a team approach and there is so much time on the front end that is spent understanding the buyer's main goals and their their top priorities. I, I just, nothing feels better than, you know, I knew you were going to end up over there. Like I knew you were going to end up in that townhouse yeah. complex in Kaneohe. You know what I mean? Like just from that initial conversation, Feels like good. I just knew you weren't going to end up in town, you know, or what have you. Here's the thing, though. I tell you the number one complaint, and you said it, you're front-loading. Mm-hmm. People are complaining, oh, Jody, damn, they require so much paperwork up front. Yeah. But that as a complaint yeah. is a compliment because how many times we get approvals from other lenders and it's like we go into escrow, I'm like, okay, that ain't going to work because they didn't front-load. And then people have spent money and got emotionally attached to the home and then, oops, sorry, you really can't qualify. So if you want to half yeah. a call it, on your pre-approvals and getting into financing, don't call Jody. Right. <laughs> so the front right. loading is the key. Want, yes. If you don't want the full picture, if you don't want us reviewing and asking the, the necessary questions that are going to come up at some point, yeah. do you want it to come up now or do you want it to come up in the middle of your escrow transaction? Yeah, do it um, now. Do it now. We, gotta, we need those answers yeah. now because we can't be – we don't want you to – have surprises. Have a bad experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the great thing about Jody and her team is even if something does pop up, figure that, it out. That could be a challenge. You guys are like you've got a great team that has so much experience, and there's always some outside of the box thinking and solutions with how to still make it work. Yeah, because the other lenders, I'm always coughing. <laughs> figure it out. With Jody, she already figured it out and has options. Yeah. And the plan. Okay. Thanks, Jody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes. All right. So that was uh, Jody Tenga. She's the mortgage genius. Uh, just by listening and being mm-hmm. in her present, your IQ goes up at least five, ten points.
I know. Yeah. So we got about four minutes left on the show. I do want to remind people that uh, Adrian has a 1984 blue Vanagon for sale. <laughs> uh, how much are you asking? 7000 7000 This thing is all macked out. You could live in it. It's like it's literally the smallest square footage of living space on Oahu. <laughs> it's a Vanagon. Uh, it's got a sink in it. It's got a bed in it. Converts into a bed. It's a brand new paint job. It works. It runs. And uh, if you have more questions about the van again, go on Craigslist or 799-9596, 799-9596. Again, we're looking for a superstar. Please go to jointeamlally.com and listen to us every Saturday on AMA 30 KHVH, home of the Guaranteed Soul Program, the Team Lally Real Estate Show. You can also catch us on all the different social media platforms. Yeah. We li- live stream on Saturday on yeah. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, Twitter, or X, whatever it's called now. Yeah. It's, it's streaming everywhere. So if you want to see what we look like and we do some screen sharing. My funny faces. Yeah. So log in there My as well. My facial expressions. It's all there. It is. And then did, right. before we wrap it up, did you want to go over the... March numbers because we do have a couple minutes. We're yeah, save the, that for next show. Uh, we'll save it for the next show because it's kind of boring stuff, but it's relevant. But we'll save that boring, relevant stuff for the, for, next, you for the next for the show. next one. Okay. Yeah, and we'll talk about it again and again and again. But we always got good stuff. So please tune in if you have any questions you want us to ask or or topics to cover on the show. Call us seven nine 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 five nine six or send us an email info i n f o at teamlally dot com. Yep, and we will answer your question live on air. On air, live. Yes. You know, it's, uh, we're going to have a stump the chump section on our, on, our, on our show where you ask a really super hard question, and uh, we're just going to use ChatGBT. We know all the <laughs> answers with ChatGBT. No, we will not use ChatGBT. We're, we're like the human version of ChatGBT for real estate. You got a question, we got answers. That's right. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for listening, and thank you to our sponsors. Jody and Derek of Pacific Rim Mortgage. Bradley of Allstate Insurance. Kenji with Pillar to Post Home Inspections. John with Kilauea Pest Control. Duke with the Hawaii Pacific Property Management. Robinson of Fine Line Paintworks. Jake with Skyta Construction. With Go Local Power. Oh, sorry. Go Local Power. Scott with Zero Res Hawaii. And Amphi with Estate Planning Group. Jason Wu, attorney at law. Jeff with the Loan Depot. Rhino of Hawaii Unified. And Janice with Dreamhouse Drafting. If you want to get a hold of any of our sponsors, it's so easy. All you got to do is go to teamlally.com. We also want to give a big thank you to Leah Rodriguez, our producer here in the studio. Gee-hoo. Make sure to tune in next week. We'll have an awesome guest talking about something that'll change your life. Forever. This is the Team Lally Real Estate Show, home of the guaranteed. Sold program. program. If we can't sell your home at the agreed upon price and our time frame, we'll have it bought for cash. Thanks, Thanks and aloha. aloha.